Hey everybody, welcome to eTrailer.com. I'm Bobby, and today we're taking a look at the Swagman XC2 2x platform rack here on our 2017 Hyundai Santa Fe. So this can be a pretty nice way, guys, of getting two of your bikes to wherever your destination might be taking you. Now, what's great about this guy, not going to be breaking the bank, just give you a way of actually getting your bikes to that destination. Now, you are going to be missing a lot of those premium features that you might start seeing on some of those more higher-end bike racks out there. However, if you're just looking for something to get the job done, that way you can start riding. Well, look no further. What I really do like about this guy, very, very simplistic design. What we have, two wheel hoops that are simply letting our bike set itself into our platform. And then we just have our center mass here. That's going to be securing our bike by giving us a little bit of down pressure there on our frame. Now to that end, not going to be good for your carbon frame bikes because we're primarily getting compression here on our bike to actually hold it in place and that can end up wearing down and deteriorating your carbon frame. So that's probably the biggest caveat with this guy. And to that end as well, if you do have any women's bikes, step through bikes or kids bikes out there that don't have a great horizontal bar, you might be in a little bit of issue there. And at that point, you're going to have to look at something like a bike adapter bar to give you that horizontal frame that you're looking for. But otherwise, Otherwise, that's pretty much the biggest failings that the XC2 has in my mind. That and the fact that it doesn't come with any kind of security measures. But we'll kind of break that down later. As you can see, as we talked about before, we do have our wheel hoops here. Now, these are pretty easily adjustable, which is great. Makes it a very, very versatile rack, which I like as well. All you got to do, back that off. It can be helpful to lubricate this. This guy's been in the shop for a while. You can see a little deterioration on there. And if you want to prevent that, just a little bit of lubrication on these brackets as you go to slide them can be great. But I wouldn't go too crazy as we still need that compression to hold it in place, right? But really, really easy to get those knobs to work, which is excellent. Now we do have two separate arms here on our center mass, making or allowing us to account for our different size bikes out there. So of course that can be a little dependent on what you got going at home, but I love that we have the ability to get almost any bike on here, which is great. Albeit, we do have all those caveats to kind of keep in mind. Now, before we get the bike off, let's go ahead and see how it's interacting here on our Santa Fe from the very back. So, what I'm looking at here, not really seeing any interaction from the back because not having too much interaction with our rear window, which is great. Our taillights still pretty easily seen here. Now, if you had a couple of bigger bikes on here, you might start running into a little bit of trouble, but I do like the distance here. That emittance of light still gonna be seen. And of course, you do have that top cowling. Now to that end, are you losing visibility in that backup camera? Yeah, and that's something that's gonna happen with almost any carrier throughout there. Um, but as you're gonna see later on, you have a couple of ways of circumventing that if you do need. Now, before we get the bike off of here, again, we do have that 35 pound weight capacity rating, making it awesome for most of the bikes out there. Now, if you start getting your heavier bikes, I would start looking at some of our other platform racks here at eTrailer.com. And if you do just have a little bit of a more expensive bike, bikes that you want to take care of just a little bit more, this might not be the, bike, the right bike rack for you. Now, does it get the job done? Yes, but you can see still just a little bit of movement here with our carrier. Is it going to do the job? Yes. But in my mind, if you had a little bit of a nicer bike, I might look at it a little bit of a better, little bit of a better carrier, but I digress. To take this off, all we have to do, press in on that lever. That's going to allow me to take my arms off. Now I can simply grab my bike, walk it off, and we're all ready to already ready to ride. So really, really easy setup for this guy. Of course, since we don't have any straps or anything we have to worry about, all we got to do, make sure our hoops are as set out as we need to be. Again, just hold up your bike, need a little longer, loosen it up and walk it out, and then you're all ready, ready to go. Now, the one thing with this guy though, you don't have a way of tilting this way while your bikes are on your carrier and accessing your hatch. To do that, we're actually gonna have to take this down just like you're seeing. Now we are gonna need to find ourselves pulling that pin to drop this center mass. Now I can get to the back here of my Santa Fe. That's gonna allow me to get those bike rats, helmets, anything else I might need from the inside. Again, though, going to have to take that bike off, and that's one feature you're losing on some of those more premium carriers. To walk this guy up, though, you simply get it up into position and latch it in. And just take a few little wiggles so you can find it, just like that. Got it replaced. Do you like those safety cables? Make it a lot easier to track those. Now, a couple things we do need to keep in mind. Our clearance with this carrier and how much length we're adding to the back of our carrier. So let's go ahead and see exactly what we're dealing with. Our biggest dimension we're going to check here first is going to be our clearance in this position. So from the ground to the very end or the underside of our carrier, that's putting us at 19 
M3 eights there to the underside. Now, one thing I'll also say, if you do have a little bit of a skinnier wheel or wheel width here, then you might have a little bit of issue with your bike hanging down just a little bit more. So if you do find yourself with a little bit of a bike or your bike hanging a little lower, make sure you're getting that measurement as well. And if you do find yourself approaching any kind of steep inclines, maybe take it nice and slow, checking that before we do approach it. And then we have a little interaction. But again, we are so well up and out of the way because of the shank. I don't think any of us are gonna have too much trouble. Let's go ahead and see though, how much length we're working with here on the back of our vehicle. Now, unfortunately, this is gonna be a pretty static length because from the back here, that's putting us at 19 and a half inches there on the back of our vehicle. And we don't actually have a way of folding this in and reducing that length. All we can do is fold these arms up. To do that, simply unlatch that pin. Of course, make sure you're Handles are actually tightened down all the way. Looks like somebody tightened, unloosened that up for the last studio shot. But all we gotta do, slot those in. Same with the other side. And what I like about this as well, shows you kind of the storing position you predominantly are gonna find yourself keeping this in. And what's awesome about this way, or this configuration, makes it really, really easy to store almost anywhere. This footprint becomes very, very small, especially here on the back of the Santa Fe, not taking up room at all, which is great, making it easier to see. People can see our taillights in this position, which is great, a lot easier to park. But what's awesome is we can find ourselves taking the shank off, breaking down that shank even further, and making the footprint way smaller, easy to fit inside a closet somewhere, excellent for city living. I think that's the really, kind of the nice feature of the XC2 here. Moving our way down to the inside though, we do have a two inch shank here today, held in by our two inch hitch receiver. On the inside of that, you are seeing a threaded anti-rattle hitch bolt. Love to see them. They take all that shake and play out, making it a lot smoother of a ride. As you guys are gonna see, as I shake this, I'm actually shaking the entirety of the vehicle. That means we're all in line with one system, making for a nicer, smoother ride for ourselves. Really do love to see that. So overall, the XC2 is just a great little bike rack. I just think it's great of how it gets the job done. If you're trying to find a way of just actually starting to hit those weekend rides, this is an excellent option. Now, if you do find yourself a little bit more expensive bikes out there and want to maintain them, make sure they're looking good for the years to come, this might not be the right rack for you. Just because the securing points on it aren't as secure as you'd probably want them to be. But other than that, I still think it's a great little system. And of course, the other thing with that about securance, there's no security measures. So we don't have a lock that's keeping our carrier too our car or even a cable lock to keep our bikes to our carrier. Now we do have all those accessories available here at eTrailer.com to allow you to start actually securing them. However, it is one more purchase, but I'll leave that up to you guys. Otherwise, I think that about does it for our look here today at the Swagman XC2 two bike platform rack here on our 2017 Hyundai Santa Fe. I'm Bobby. Thank you for watching. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side to side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then, onto our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or even uneven pavement. Last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway.